All right. <laughs> All right, hi. My name is Jennifer. Um, I am gonna talk today just probably less about technical stuff and more about team dynamics um, and you know how to love your team without a get along shirt. Um, so I've been in teams of two. I've been in teams of 60. I'm currently in a team of about seven or eight. So I've been all over the map with the amount of teams um, that I've been in. I've been in teams of a lot of people that are a lot older than me, people that are a lot younger than me. You know, it's just, it's really interesting to work with a bunch of people. So uh, these are the things I'm gonna cover today. So first we're gonna talk about communication. Um, then we can talk a little bit about training. And then we talk a lot about documentation because that is every developer's favorite topic ever, is documentation. And then we'll talk about morale and then we can just talk. So, all right. And remember, friendship is magic. All right. Okay, so communication. New phone, who it is? So I really feel like communication is a learned skill, right? Not all of us come out being great communicators. Sometimes we have these amazing ideas in our head and we just can't get them out. And a lot of times it depends on where we're working, if we're working remote or if we're in an in-person office situation. So um, a lot of times you can't get away from slacker teams, no matter if you're remote or in the office. It seems like that follows you around no matter where you go. So, uh, just trying to stay up on that. So there are team members that maybe don't check their Slack messages or they, they go into focus mode, right? And like three hours later, they might get back to you, things like that. So sometimes it's good as a team to come to an agreement, like, hey, try and check your messages every 15 minutes or so. You know, it can be difficult or, or let us know. If you need to go head down mode and you need to like figure this thing out, just tell people, just be like, yo, I'm working on a really hard problem. Give me a couple hours, and then I'll get back to you. So, because uh, otherwise, this this idea of Slack and Teams it's a lot different than back in the day when you worked in an office and someone had to get up from their desk, walk over to your cubicle, peek in, see if you were busy, and then bug you. Right now, like you can send messages at six o'clock at night mm -hmm. when you have some of those team members that you know. Maybe a lot of us have flexible schedules. Though, like we're blessed to be in this industry where sometimes you can take a two hour doctor's appointment in the middle of the day, so you are working at eight o'clock at night. So just being aware of, just let people know. You know, if you're away from your desk, if you're at lunch, you know, whatever, let them know. And then sometimes, you know, there's people that talk a lot. So, uh, <laughs> and that's why I like that Kevin Hart meme. Uh, the face you make when your coworker talks too much, because there is that one person that you can, in Slack it's very fun, you can go to stats and see who sent the most messages. So uh, in my, a previous job of mine, we used to give out Slack awards. So somebody would win for sending the most messages. Somebody, would, it was great. <laughs> so just being aware of uh, the different modes of communication in person can sometimes be a lot easier. If somebody doesn't get back to you in Slack, you can kind of see, oh, they're not at their desk. They might be in a meeting or did So if you're working remote, you don't get that access to like, know where they are and then some people start to make assumptions like hey they can get back to me you know maybe they're playing golf or sitting on the beach but they probably aren't maybe they're just working really hard on a problem so all right and then training um i think that it's important and we all probably know this to keep training on your own right you you are responsible for your own personal learning like keep learning this job that we have we are gonna learn until the day we retire. Things change, libraries update, documentation changes. You know, the WCAG keeps coming out with new stuff. So you just are always learning. And then I also think it's important that you train as a team. So not only do you need to go out and keep up with the things that interest you, like maybe it's accessibility, maybe it's, you know, cool JS libraries. Maybe you get super excited every time a new one comes out. Because that's you, that's pers that's going to keep you fired up and motivated. But then as a team, you should probably also agree with, hey, we should probably all keep up with PHP. If, if you're not doing fancy Next.js rendering with your Drupal site, you know, we should all probably keep up with PHP as it chugs along. I think 8.3, are we on 8.3 now? Yeah, so 
Uh, and also training, if you train as a team and you all agree, like we should all know these really basic five bucket things. It's really nice to onboard new team members with that knowledge, right? Like, go look at this. Here's what we all agreed we'd all know at the base, you know? So it makes training new on onboarding. Wow. It makes onboarding new team members a lot easier. <laughs> And again, I, I might be, you know, re-saying things because my brain's going faster than my slides, but just keep up with your own personal learning. And that's you. That's yours. That's personal. You can go learn about whatever you want. You know, go build a Flutter app on the side. You, you, you get to do that. But keep excited about what's going on in the, in the dev world. Okay. And then if you come up with process improvements and other such shenanigans, that helps too. And that comes out of training. I fully believe that that comes out of falls out of training, right? Process improvements. Talk to people. See how they do it at their company. How do you guys handle merge requests? How do you handle merge conflicts? How do you, how do you guys handle hierarchy? Things like that. Um, and that will, that will help a bunch. All right. I'm probably going to spend the most time on documentation. Okay. Documentation is more than just commenting your code. It's more than just slash slash, this is what this function does. Okay, that's amazing. Please keep doing that. But it's, it's more than that, right? So um, I have a previous uh, project manager who has what he calls the bus protocol. Okay, so what happens if a team member isn't reachable for whatever reason? Okay, so we'll put a happier reason up there. Maybe they're on vacation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it, it was it sticks in your brain right when you think bus protocol but what happens if like Oz doesn't make it to work tomorrow and he was working on a really important part feature like we're all really sad that Oz is on vacation enjoying jet skiing but now we are either stuck until Oz comes back or somebody spends the time to rifle through hopefully his code that he pushed up before he left you know and figure out what's going on so Really what you're doing by documenting is you're helping your team, you're helping yourself. I like to say I'm, my future self is gonna thank me in two months when I write this down and I forget why I wrote this function the way I did. Um, it just helps. We have a lot going on in our brains at all times. So getting it out on paper, even if it's in a notepad or something, it helps. All right, and I had to include these. These are amazing, so you can read these. <laughs> I have come across some amazing comments in the wild um, with legacy code that I have worked on and it's just been so it's always fun to leave little nuggets like this but also you know it's good to sometimes write comments in your code but it's not enough you got to write it in other parts of documentation too the other thing with documentation is I have run across thankfully some people that maybe are near the end of their career that feel like if they document things, they won't be needed anymore, right? And that's, that's sad, right? I'm sad for them because we do need them. They, they bring value to the team, not just because they know how to write this function or how this algorithm works or how this bash script, whew, how this bash script works. You know, that's not the only reason they're there. And I think that as a developer, it was really hard to learn that I wanna be wanted at a job, not needed at a job. I want to bring other things to the team besides the fact that I know how to write this function or how to pull in this view or hit reach this API endpoint. Anybody can learn how to do that. That's a Google OA, right? But you want to bring other values to the team, like documentation, you know, and helping your team members like learn things and being a mentor and being a mentee because you really should be both. So not only should you be asking the people that are further along the road than you, you should be turning around and helping those that are behind you. So. I feel like documentation is a great way to add value to your team, right? It's just awesome. Nobody likes to do it, but it's really important. Um, also, written communication gives us a chance to like clarify what we mean, right? We get to maybe put code snippets right in there, like mark down to code snippets that somebody can copy and paste and they will love you for life, right? Especially if they're SQL commands, just saying. So uh, rather than you going over to the desk, hun hunkering over their shoulder and be like, oh, you gotta type this and here, no, just give me the keyboard, you know, and then you do it. That doesn't help anyone get any better. It doesn't help the bus protocol situation, right? So just write it down. 
And then, you know, you because you have people that maybe need to look back or, or relearn something several times before it sticks in their head. And some people will pick something up after the first time and run with it. So if they have a place they can go back to, they don't feel silly for asking you five times because they can go reference it. Or that person, you know, that's really good at it, then they don't need to go look at it. But it's there if they want it. So write it down. It helps. All right, and I feel like all of this stuff leads into morale, team morale. So rising waters sink ships, or something like that. I don't, again, fun, fun little saying. But uh, I think it's really true that if we all, it's that really corny boat metaphor, right? If we're all rowing in the same direction, we're gonna get there a lot faster. If you have one person who's looking backwards in the back trying to row against all of you, it's not really fun and nobody really likes to work with that person nobody like it just it's not great so to get around that i think having clear communication that isn't necessarily personal right like geez tom is awful you know he can't even do this thing right like don't don't go down that path but maybe just being like hey tom i noticed you wrote this this way we'd really like the whole team to be consistent and write it this way that's a much better message than dwelling and being like, man, Tom doesn't know how to code, you know. that That's really easy, especially to fall to, into if you work remotely, because you're in your own little world, you're in your own little office, you know. And so it's, it's much easier to make it like a team-wide thing. And kindness is contagious, right? We all have bad days. And uh, I like to think of when you're developing, we all kind of have little roles that we play, and we switch between these roles. There's the hero that comes in at the end and picks something that broke on prod and they can get it fixed in five seconds and you love and they're just amazing, right? They're the hero. Then you have the doer. They don't want to think about how to do something. They don't want to talk about process improvement. They would tell me what to do. Give me my JIRA tickets. Let me loose, right? Those people are also extremely important, right? Not everyone wants to write boring CSS hours on a time. Some people do. So you like need both of those kinds of people on your team. Then you have problem solvers that are really good at theorizing. Like, wouldn't it be great if we wrote this thing like this or we did this this way? It would be amazing, right? But they don't actually write anything. And you're like, that's a great idea, but maybe we need some help implementing it. And then you have perfectionists um, where you will write something and it's, it's pretty solid. You know, it's an eight out of 10, but they're like, but you could write it this way. They're the people that will argue with you about if you put a return after your curly brace or not. And you're like, not super important to the functionality of this app, but you know, they want everything to be perfect. So, and then I have one that I like to call the arsonist slash firefighter. Okay. They will come in and they're in a hurry. They will do something quick. Maybe it's the day before launch or something. They'll do something real quick like, and it breaks. And then they'll come in and fix it and be the hero, but not really, because you're like, you're the, you're the one who started it on fire. <laughs> so, and what I want to point out is not everyone is this role all the time. We all step into this role from time to time. I've been an arsonist firefighter. I tend to own up to it, though. I don't hide it. I'm like, oh, whoops, yeah, I'll fix that real quick, you know. Um, but you do have people that won't admit that they started the fire, so... Uh, just know that, you know, be kind. We all play these roles every time and again. There are times where after a big feature launch or after a big architecture discussion, I don't want to think hard anymore. I just want to write some CSS. I want to make that button pretty. I want to write some JavaScript, you know. So just be kind. All right. So let's talk about, like, the things that you see in your teams, and I can talk about some of the things I see in my teams, and this went a lot faster than I thought it was going <laughs> to. So, um, like I said, I'm kind of in a team of eight right now, and um, I've been there a little over a year, so I kind of, I'm a quiet person when I first start a new team, because I like to see what's going on. I like to see the dynamic before I jump in with my hundreds of gifts on a daily basis. Um, I have been known when it gets real quiet in Slack, because we all work remotely, to, to a, do a Giphy check-in. I don't want any words. Just send me a GIF of how you're doing right now. And that is just some great entertainment right there. So, um, And then and when I was in a team of two, 
we were running around with our heads cut off. I don't think we had any time for any anything at all. And uh, so that was really stressful. And then in a team of 50, sometimes you feel like you get a little bit lost. So, I don't know. Does anyone have anything to share? Did anything resonate? Does anyone have anything to add to any of the things I talked about? Some of it's probably obvious. Maybe some of it you just thought about it a different way. Do you have any other like roles on your team other than like firefighter and yeah? Question, sure. We use the we use the bus scenario. Oh so yes. Like, yep. Solid. <laughs> Love you it. Get on the bus tomorrow. How do we do this? <laughs> so that's how we encourage each other to write documentation and instructions um, because we're a team. My team's four, and we each are very. Like one's more accessibility, one's more like we each kind of have our own role, so then we don't overlap things a lot because we're so small. And but my biggest question I have is kind of what you guys have done for things like we get so overwhelmed by the slacks, the emails, the JIRAs, the and plus we do my team does more than just web stuff, so like I have a marketing group that I'm on who also has a similar not JIRA but something like that, they also have a similar Slack. They also email, they have a design system. Like, I have at least 14 different things that I'm supposed to check every day. So, and most of them I can send an email notification. That's how I solve it myself. But mm -hmm. I'm curious to learn how other people solve that, where you have 15 different communication systems and how you can manage that. Because like, all I can do all day is just sit and open each one and go, did I get caught up? And I can never do any work, technically. So I'm just curious, and that frustrates my team too, and I try to figure out ways to Narrow it for them, but yeah. I'm just curious how you guys have done that in your positions. <laughs> I have I have a few thoughts, but I'll wait till okay. somebody else. Unless any. Go ahead. No, I, <laughs> okay. I understand that problem, but I don't know that I have any great solutions. Um, I think what you're doing is great with the email notifications. I think that. Um, Sometimes it's like if you all have shared calendars, do you have calendars that you can all see? Yes. There are times that I will block off time that's not a meeting and I will just put, this is when I'm gonna check on this project. This is when I'm gonna like focus on this. So, because I think in the past I've realized when everything is on fire, nothing's on fire, right? Yeah, and it's just a matter of how on fire is it? Like what, what alarm is this fire? So that can get extremely draining, and then you feel like you're not giving anything useful to the things you're looking at. So there are times where it's gonna be like, you know what, from three o'clock to four o'clock, that's when I'm gonna do this marketing stuff, and like you have to figure out the times. For that. Or maybe it's only Tuesdays and Thursdays. Again, yours might need to be daily, right? But some things can be like, you know what, Tuesdays are my day that I'm gonna focus on this particular project. Um, because I feel like if you don't block off your calendar, people just assume you're free all the time, even though you're not because you are so busy. So that's a useful sometimes to just block off calendar locks and, and do time management that way. Of course, sometimes something's really gonna truly be on fire and you have to jump over, but um, that's one way to do it. Um, it's hard when there's different communication platforms because um, I have some team members that prefer to email, I have some that prefer to Slack, you know, and it's just like, oh, can we just do one? Can we all disagree on one? And sometimes, you know, you can't. Sometimes somebody's like, no, I'm gonna email you. So, uh, that's the only thing I can think of right now is just calendar blocking and just setting boundaries is really hard too, because especially on a small team, because you don't wanna leave anyone else in the lurch because you feel like, well, I gotta, I gotta do this because otherwise so-and-so can't do what they need to do. And you know, that's really tough, um, but just, learning to set, I don't, I don't even know how to, it, boundaries is a good word, but like, you know, like, hey, I really need to try to barrel this in from three to four on Mondays, right? So that I can give you my full attention, so I can help you the best I can. So that I don't have five other people in the background being like, but what about this? What about this? You know, so. Does anyone else have any other What type of organization are you in? Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's always more than just web stuff happening, <laughs> politics and other things. And oh, yeah. It's, like myself, I'm more of the project manager, so I figure it out. But mm -hmm. It's frustrating to my team and how everybody has a different personality and everybody likes a little thing, but then they're like, why do we have to check seven different things every day? 
Cal mm -hmm. uh, I would recommend also, while you ha might have your colander set up and blocked out, make sure that all of your communication channels reflect that. So all of your Slack channels are accurately showing, no, I'm busy from this time and I'm heads down. Like, if you need me, DM me and then I'll get back to you. Otherwise, I'll catch up when I'm done. Um, and you could use a, you know, email notification or a vacation responder. Mm -hmm. Like from this time to this time, if people love to email you, be like, you're gonna get this response of I am busy. I'll get back to you after four o'clock. Um, I don't know how easy or realistic that would be to set up on a reoccurring thing, but a possible solution to look into for blocking out your time. So you mentioned uh, earlier something about like every, people should check their email every 15 minutes and that kind of scared me. Oh, oh no, no, no. <laughs> That's what our team agreed with, right? So our team agreed to check our Slack messages every 15 minutes. Sure. And that means like just looking at it and seeing if you were tagged, right? Because right? when you're tagged in Teams, I think that the channel like shows a different color. Like, yeah. you know, you've been tagged. That doesn't mean we go catch up on all our messages. It just means have I been tagged? Okay. But that's a that's our team rule, right. and you know that can be doesn't have to be your team rule. It's a lot. It's a lot. Let me tell you. The, the point I wanted to make is that I think you're creating a culture in any individual group around what the expectations yes. are, right? Exactly. And, and you might develop a culture where people feel like they have to respond to things within 15 minutes. And that doesn't have to be the case, right? No. You might need to develop a culture where people understand and expect that maybe you've got a specific uh, channel. Mm -hmm. This is where the emergencies go, right? Um, and other things don't need to be responded to. You can't, I mean, if you're checking your email, your Slack, and your <laughs> every 15 minutes, that might be the problem, right? It's like yeah. sometimes you have to train yourself and train your team to just not be that focused and I do understand especially in your kind of scenario where you might need a channel for those emergency things yeah. but let's focus it there uh, uh, my situation of working on a team is probably unusual and has its own challenges I most I have a small uh, Drupal uh, 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 Drupal backdrop company we I work with a team in Bangladesh and uh, I have some associates, contractors in the U.S. I'm dealing with clients sort of during the day. I stay up at night, but a lot of my work time is not synchronous with my team. Mm -hmm. So we're, 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 there are some, I try to make sure there's always some overlap, so I have time to do Zoom meetings with them and things. But a lot of work is, is happening when we're not online, which helps with things like yeah. that, right? <laughs> yeah. I just, I'm not checking for their, their stuff every 15 minutes. Right. The thing, that, that you talk, uh, I, uh, the documentation is really important in that kind of team, right? Oh, yes. The thing that you talked about, and um, I think a really simple thing that I really try to stress with my team is in, in JIRA, you know, when I ask uh, a question or, or point out a bug uh, that I don't want to see, I fixed it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see, well, well, how did you fix it? Yes, right? yeah. Because six months later, there's going to be a problem, and I'm going to remember, oh, we had that before, right? What did we do? And if I go back and I find the issue and it says I fixed it, that's not very helpful to me. No, that's so that's, that's the, a really good point, right. yeah. That's the, uh, so, and I think my team has gotten much better at that, and sometimes I just prop them. <laughs> they say I fixed it, and I just respond, how did you fix it, please? Yeah, for sure. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, and documentation, if you make it, like, a team effort, right? Don't don't pile it all on one person, right? Um, and then the if if the person who fixed it, just go put it right now. Don't don't say I'll add notes on Friday, because by the time Friday rolls around, you're not going to add those notes. Just do it right now. Like I fixed it, and I'm going to go write down what I did right now, right? And if everyone tries to help each other to do that, it, it starts to become a habit, right? It's not going to be fun at first. Nobody. I know, I don't like writing documentation. I like to have documentation. 
I don't like to write it, right? We all appreciate a really good, well-documented library. You know, like, hey, I want to do this, and it's got a really robust fact like section, and we're like, this is amazing. But nobody actually wants to write that stuff. So just helping everybody, you know, get in that culture of, we can do this, we can do this, because it's going to help us. Future us is going to think past us was awesome. So. Uh, the, 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 my pet thing is, is like using the issue queue for documentation, <laughs> but also uh, as a community member in an open source community, to carrying that outside of my team mm -hmm. to where we're talking about like, is there a module for X, right? Is that I'm, uh, I'm more engaged with the community than my team members are. So if I have a question, like I will go to the Drupal community or I will go to the backdrop community where I, I'm more frequently working and ask a question. And I like to do that in a public way where it's again documented, yes, right? So, for so sure. uh, I will, it, it, and oftentimes I will go to a, a public forum, and, and I think this used to happen a lot more, and it's it's waning, and I think our, our sort of community documentation is suffering because of it, but go to a public forum and ask my question, uh, hoping that other people will, will answer it for me, rather than go to Slack or something where, you know, somebody might answer it, but again, it isn't shared. It's not there for me six months later, mm -hmm. and I... <laughs> I recently ran into a scenario where I went to the forum, I asked a question, then I started searching it and found another place where I asked that question six months ago. <laughs> and six months ago when I asked the question, I referred to a time before that that I had asked the question, yeah. the same question. So this was at least the third time I'd come back to this public forum with the same problem. And just by answering it in public, you know, yeah. it's there for me next time. Yeah. Something you said just reminded me um, when you said that the I, I fixed it comment that somebody I see that in Stack Overflow consistently. Like I'm like, oh, this person is having the exact same issue as me, and like the third comment is, never mind, got it, and that's it. And you're like, oh, come on, man, you're killing me. So I've I've seen that a few times too. So um, and and do starting documentation like that that even can start you into contributing to the Drupal community too, because that. Sometimes you, you know, we all talk about imposter syndrome and all that jazz. Sometimes it feels a little scary to dip your toe into helping on contrib modules or helping on some issue in an issue queue. If you start getting really good at documenting within your own team, you, you practice, you flex that muscle, right? And then it's a little less scary to like add a patch or the new craze of doing those MRs that you can make a patch out of, which I've learned how to do now, it's very fancy. Um, and starting to contribute because I don't know where I would be if other people hadn't documented stuff or put patches up on contrib modules or and explained why the patch works because that's huge, right? Like, why is this patch going to fix the issue that I'm having? Um, and, and a lot of, you know, I, there's quite a few patches I've had to install just because of PHP upgrades, right? Just old functions, right? That just haven't had a time to. That's an easy patch to make, right? I mean, if you have your VS Code set up right, with IntelliFence, it's going to tell you, hey, this, this function name isn't a thing anymore. You know, fix it. So doing it small and within your team can lead to you being able to, you know, contribute into the Drupal community, which is just a huge, huge benefit to you and other people. So that's a good point. Thanks for that thought. I like it. <laughs> I think we have a lot of the same channel over little problems that you have at organization. Um, so there's like different people, teams working in Jira or working in Monday.com or working in Asana and then uh, the, like where you connect those together are, are basically email which is a non-system or, or possibly teams which is also in my opinion a non-system. Uh, but one I think that I think is maybe possibly your saving grace is that and, and it could be my perspective as being mostly a developer but a very it, it's, it's, it, there aren't very many people who have to have introspection to all of our systems. Like the Jira board that we have is between the web team and no one else uses it except for us. We maintain good hygiene in our system. Uh, but the people who need to know details about what we're doing never need to look at Jira. They, they uh, you know, when they need to know, you know, is this particular feature going to be ready for production? They don't need to know the nitty gritty of it. And so there are different ways of getting that information out for us, which I mean is, is often just like uh, a regular meeting that we might have outside, like a cross-departmental meeting that we might have. Um, 
or or its email or something. And, and uh, I realized that that's not the best way of going about it. Uh, it's still better than having one person who wants to dive into like six different methodologies and management systems. So I don't know exactly what your situation is, but um, aren't you find that you, you have to introspect into all these different? Yeah, like, you know? it, it's mainly because like so our team. Actually, most of it, we kind of moved away. We had a ticketing system for people that needed help, and people were frustrated and not answering consumers a form for everything on the university. <laughs> and so they were like, just email. So we had this like general email thing, and then I could distribute it out to the team. Um, but then we had things, we weren't using a Jira, like a system, I can't remember what it was called. And we kind of went away from that, because that was getting frustrating too, because there was too many. But then we worked with a third party developer who uses Jira, Slack, Right now. <laughs> and then our marketing third party developer who uses a design system, a ticketing system, and something similar to Slack. And then there's the random email. So it's just like <laughs> in the it, you know, and then at a university you just also have all these other things you have to these other systems for IT and there's a system for accounting and different things you have to learn. So you're sitting at the friction point being all those things. Yeah. You're the, you're the cat herder. For me, I am the herder, so <laughs> yeah. I deal with it. But mm -hmm. My team is always so frustrated. Like, I didn't, I, I checked my emails, but I didn't see the 17 Slack messages. And I was in Jira today, but I didn't get to my 72 emails. And like, they're just, they always are asking me for tools. And I try to give them some, but it's just, I think it's just the world too now, but trying to get them. Yeah. Like the best tools. Is there any leverage you have with like your third, the third parties, especially that use their own external systems? Yes. Can you can you make them, uh, you know, come to you more rather than you going out to what they're doing on their side? Is there, mm. is there any? I think I've asked, and I think the solution was the like notifications, like make sure you tag us mm. so that we get the tag or like we get a notice that you did something or. Because they're all kind of do their own thing too, so you're trying to tell a company to do their yeah. come do our thing. <laughs> I mean, so I worked, on, I worked on both sides of the equation. I've been yeah. an agency yeah. with our own internal uh, systems, and I've worked for like a client organization that that you know has their own stuff as well. Yeah. And I, I feel pretty strongly now, having worked in both places, that it's the agency that needs to be able to come to yeah. wherever it is because uh, it, it, yeah. it is. It's somewhat, it's it's convenient for the agency to say, no, you've got to use our tools. Our, our tools, we're, we're a fine stream or distribution. So it, that, that's, that's not servicing the needs of your client. And that's the entire point of being an agency, right? Yeah. So I, I don't know that you have any leverage to do that, but I feel very strongly that your uh, third parties are doing it wrong and need to realize you're doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah. And we probably just haven't pushed enough. To, like, we just yeah. ask, yeah. and they're like, well, this is what we use. And, we never like say no. We have to use ours, so I don't know that we've really pushed them. So that's a good point. We're we're too Midwest here. Yeah. yeah. No, no problem. No problem. We'll come. No, we'll come to it. <laughs> I will. I'll second that notion because we're, I'm in a agency, and our yeah. client has their own Jira, their own Slack, and I yeah. find it. Uh, they use Teams for their communication, for meetings and stuff. Well. My agency internally we use uh, like Google yeah. products, but while it's annoying to me to have to use their system, it's their system and they're my client. So I am, that's where I communicate with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's how I communicate with them. And you know, they maintain their Jira board. They have to let me into all of those things so that I can interact with it which is a little on them to be like, here are the keys to yeah. these things, <laughs> but then it's up to me to be like, hey, here's my step. We're having a release today. They have their own DPQA, have to send out all those notifications to their team, and then if there's any troubleshooting or things that are on the agency side, I'll communicate on my side because the client doesn't need to know that. Mm -hmm. So, but from the agency, it, yeah, it, we come to you. Do you, okay. do you have any advice for her to say that to her third parties? What what would be a good way to breach that? Do you have the, set up your systems first that you want to bring them <laughs> yeah. into. Okay. Yeah. So if you're using, if your team is using Jira or want them to use Jira, then 
make them or set that all up and be like, here you are, come in. Yeah. Um, instead of would trying to yeah. Oh, maybe maybe don't fun. ask. Just be like, here, here, we're, we're doing some process improvements, yeah. right? We're, we're trying to hurt yeah. our cats. We're doing some, and don't, don't be like, oh, do you think you could maybe hop in here and give us, nope, yeah. here, here it is. I need a notification here, you know, and, and you don't have to, that's not rude of us to ask that. I know that, that sometimes it's hard for me to be um, straightforward with people, right? Because it feels rude, but it's not, you know, you're paying them. You're paying them, right? So, you know, just be like, hey, we're doing some process improvements. We're going to use this system. Here's your login. I need you to place these things here. You know, and uh, it's it's okay to say that. You're, yeah. Like, you pay them money. Yeah. Like, you, you get to go to McDonald's and order the burger the way you want. <laughs> so, you know, you can bring it back if there's cheese on it and you don't want cheese. <laughs> so, and, and, and it's, if they aren't willing to do that, maybe it's time... I mean, not immediately, right? Because that stuff takes time. Maybe it's time to look around. Be like, I need somebody who's going to make my life easier. So, so somebody working in a small agency, I endorse the philosophy, less sanas of going to the, the client's tools. But at, at, from the agency's perspective, then, if you've got people that are working with three or four different clients with three or four different tools, how do you manage that? Then you run into where I am at. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think uh, you still use the tool set that, that you, you use right. internally, the ones you, the ones you, you figure out what is the, the packet that goes between your organizations that the, the, that makes the sense. And it's probably not gonna be as atomic as the, the, tool, the tool set that you have. You're not gonna go ticket by ticket, but you're gonna to have to figure out you know, some, some way of doing a, a dump between systems that, that works for your cadence, your development cadence. But I, I do think that it's something that needs to be baked into your, to the agency process. Uh, and, and negotiate it up, up front, uh, and it, it might increase overhead that needs to be priced in. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. But is it maybe a, 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 a person that's sort of the bridge? Right. That there's somebody responsible for communicating with the client and their tool, and then bringing that back to the internal tool and saying, as a team here, this is what we need. Ideally, yes. Uh, I just, you know, I, I've had a lot of clients that, like, you know, we expected them to use to use our tool set, and like, they, they don't understand our tool set, they don't understand our processes, and so, like, it, it doesn't get done, and then, then we're like, well, you didn't do these things, and we're like, there, there's like, no one's gonna own up to that exactly, and they'll be like, <laughs> okay, it's tangentially, I like, guess, my fault, but really, all that is is just bad feelings, right? You, as the agency, have a much better idea of what what you need and. Yeah what you need to communicate than the, the person who's asking for expertise. Well, yeah. the expert. Yeah. When I was suggesting a bridge, I meant from the agency, right? Somebody yeah. right. internally on the team that's responsible for communicating with the client. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, and then bringing it in, you know, maybe somehow bringing it into the internal system. Right? Yeah. 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 And I guess at some companies that's the, the mythical account manager, right? <laughs> That beautiful term, or or it could be the lead dev that happens to be the main point of contact between that. Yeah, it's tricky. You gotta. Yeah, I didn't think about it from the agency standpoint too, but I, I feel like I you know I've worked at an agency before where you know 60 websites at a time, right? And that that can get a little overwhelming, but um, yeah, so I've seen that side. <laughs> it gets a little bit a little bit big, but all right. Any other beautiful, this, this conversation went some awesome places. So any other beautiful insights or? This is in the weeds a little bit. You use Teams? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, that, yeah. everyone has that, that reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask how you use Teams? Do you actually have you know, the, the lowercase t Teams inside Teams? Or like, do you have like structured Teams with, cha with like channels inside Teams that are like named? Yes. Uh, and you do? All of the things. All and the things. they aren't, okay. I, so I work on a government contract, so that it's all Microsoft. Oh. Like, we're going to work on a document together. It's Word. And you're like, cool. <laughs> you know, um, so it's, I've seen that there are, um, like, the teams that are not a channel. I'm learning all these fun words because I came from Slack world, right? So yeah. there's these teams, right? So if you're a member of that team, you are all in this space. Um, I'm not a fan of how the conversations thread and things in there. It's not, yeah. ugh. Okay, so it's there, but nobody really uses it except to store documents um, that are related to that team. 
Okay, so chatter right. doesn't happen in the team. Chatter does not happen there. I wish is, it did because you could tag people, right? You can't tag people in channels in Teams. Like you can't tag the QA team in a channel, but you can tag them in a team situation. Oh, I've Googled so many things. Um, so chatter happens in channels, right? So like conversations, like, in, like so I'll in, no in the teams in, conversations. In, like, yeah. yeah. So I might like if you're my dev team over here, yeah. the four of us would start a conversation together. Right, and so it's chats. It's just nothing but a ton of chats, yeah. and so I have all 15 of my pin spaces full, yeah. and and then some. I need more, please, Microsoft Teams. Please let me pin more than 15, but they don't. So, um, you just kind of like we don't have a choice of what our communication tool is. So yeah. we just that's not a fight worth having, right? We're using Teams. This is how we're doing it. So we try to use it in a way that you know benefits us but yeah um, I wish that we had slack I wish that we had some other kind of tool um, I wish we could collaborate in Google Docs I wish all of these things but that's just not not in the cards <laughs> so yeah we use teams so uh, I sometimes I hear teams notifications in my sleep it's great not really and then uh, sometimes your Mac will update and then just not give you notifications anymore so that's fun Learned that. If that happens to you, I can help you. <laughs> Got to go into system preferences and tell it to let you ping you. But yeah. What uh, what communication tools do you guys use? Teams. Teams. I teams email. Uh, that's that's good. That, uh, organization wide, that's that's it. Basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, do you use the team chats over just chat chats? Yeah. So yeah, no, we don't use teams. We have them, but like since nobody ever went there to check, because like you, you have to you have to go to a different part of teams. Yes. Like, to your team, you have to go through your channel. No one's going to do that. No one understands the notification. So, so very quickly, like we realized, no one is ever going to use that part of Teams at all. It's just a, it's a ghost town. It's all just chats. Yeah. Uh, just chats. And the documents get uploaded into the chats. Mm -hmm. So, like you know, a chat gets created for every meeting, right? Because a meeting request gets created in Teams. So you have like Teams and meetings, and then that 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 accompanies a chat as well. It's the same thing. Yeah. And so often, like after a meeting, that that chat that is like the the, the remnant of a of a meeting becomes the de facto like discussion space and file space. I've seen that too. Now that you say that, yeah, we have some conversations in like project related chats, mm -hmm. but then some of that conversation is spilled into the meeting that we had about that project. Yep. So then sometimes you have to go look at both places where in reality it would probably be better to have it in one space. Yeah, that's a good point. I guess we I just did it and didn't even think about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is it like Slack plus a bunch of tools? It's it's like, a it sounds like Bizarro Slack that has a ton more clicks to get yes. into different organizations of things. And I sort of understand where it's coming from because it has to be like something that is layered on top of a whole suite of Microsoft products, yeah, uh, and Microsoft organizations for things. Whereas you know Slack doesn't have those constraints, uh, but it, it does mean that there's just a ton of friction in terms of figuring out how to get to places, how to get to your information, how to organize information. And uh, I've heard of no one who likes Teams. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Yay, our sponsors. Anyway. I appreciate the conversation we had. Um, this was awesome. So, did you get some ideas to yeah. take back? Okay, that's good. It sounds like we're all in the same. Yeah. yeah. Because that too, like your team's comment, we were, we were just, like as a university, we can only do some things too. So we can't technically add Slack or Jira's right. or they don't allow us to buy those. But yeah, they get, the team gets frustrated with the team's thing and then they just, they won't, they just don't look then. Yeah. They're like, oh, did you email me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well. <laughs> so yeah, our lowest common denominator is is email. It's yeah. that everybody has. It's that everybody knows they have to check. Yeah. And it, it's like I, I hate it, but well, I've learned to to stop fighting it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. I mean, like I, I don't want to embrace it, but it's what, what it's working and it's what I use. Yeah. And having a better attitude about it going in has helped me cope. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and I just kind of learned, I do kind of push more just the email just because it's it's calming more to my team with all the different personalities and ages and they just don't get as frustrated. So yeah. Just, I, I figure out what to do, but it's just good to hear other people's opinions of all the tools we have out there now. <laughs> How you try to manage your time and check all of them at the same time. So. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think we're at time. Let's see. Yep. 12 seconds over. <laughs> yeah. Thank you.